Howdy folks, welcome to The Daily Coin. Today is Wednesday, December the 12th, 2018, and I have the very distinct honor and high privilege of welcoming someone back to the show that I haven't spoken with in entirely too long. And you know him, you love him, he needs no introduction. He is the world's foremost trend forecaster, and I'm speaking, of course, of Mr. Gerald Salente. Mr. Salente, welcome back to The Daily Coin. Oh, thanks for having me on, Rory. Well, I'm glad you're here, and we were just talking just uh, very briefly before we started recording, and you just sent out your uh, trends, uh, top 10 trends for 2019, and we're going to talk about the uh, trends forecast that you'll be releasing over at trendsresearch.com. And uh, I wanted to ask you about what's going on in one of your top 10. And the first casualty of war is truth. And truth, from my perspective, uh, died on December 23rd, 1913, with the signing of the Federal Reserve Act, allowing a private banking cabal to hijack our nation's currency and wealth. I would argue with the global uprising that we are seeing across Europe and Brazil, the UK, the election of President Trump, we're seeing the people rise up against these agents. From your perspective, Mr. Salente, what do the trends point towards in regards to these uprisings? Well, it's an anti-establishment trend. You look what's going on in, in France right now with the yellow vests. You know, it, it's, there, there's been no recovery. The numbers tell the story. The politicians and the media tell the lie. So let's look at the Oxfam report. It shows that eight people have more money than half the world combined. In the USSA, we have three people, Jeff Bezos, Warren Buffett, and Bill Gates have more money than half the United States population combined. Wow. Those are facts. I'm not making those up. Go back to too big to fail. Began on the Bush, pushed forward by Obama. Too big to fail. I hear these people claiming that socialism is killing capitalism in America. Capitalism is long gone. In capitalism, there's no such thing as too big to fail. Too big to fail is the merger of corporate and state interests called by Mussolini fascism, the merger of state and corporate powers. So what's going on is that around the world, people are uprising against the inequality, Rory, that has happened since 2009. Over 95% of the wealth generated has gone to the 1% in the United States. So when you look at the wages, they're not even keeping up with inflation at the fake numbers that we have in inflation, thanks to Slick Willie Slimeball Clinton, who, along with the other politicians, changed what goes into the inflation rate. So they give us a phony number so that when you get your Social Security checks, you get less money. When you put the real number in even, it's way below inflation, and that's wages. Because we've turned into a multinational conglomerate where the bigs own everything, they control it all, and they keep wages down because you have no future. There's no competition. So, for example, when I was a young man, and millennials and Generation Z probably never heard of these things, there were places called hardware stores before Home Depot and Lowe's gobbled them all up. There were things called stationery stores before Staples closed them all up. They deregulated the Robinson Patman Act, Sherman Antitrust Act. Clayton Antitrust Act, and allowed the multinationals to control the major businesses in Slavelandia, 
were just workers on that plantation. And then, of course, Slick Willie Clinton, the lowlife that he is, also deregulated the Glass-Steagall Act that allowed the banksters, and you pointed out, brought to you by Woodrow, Woodrow may he rotten hell Will, Winst, Wilson, the former president of Princeton University, who not only gave us the Federal Reserve, which, by the way, was a major issue throughout the 1800s, not to have the central banksters take over the nation. He also brought us World War I, a war that was totally avoidable, that only a sick SOB could get us into. So going back to the banksters and going back to 2009 and Too Big to Fail, there is no recovery. The only recovery has been for the equity markets. And that's because the banksters invented something that they never taught me in economics 101 or graduate school. And that's called negative and zero interest rate policy and quantitative easing. The whole debt bomb is ready to explode. The only thing that keeps it going is the monetary methadone that they keep shooting into the marketplace to keep the sick drug dealers that people call financiers, hedge funds, and other investment groups alive. NERP, ZERP, and QE are the monetary heroin that have propped up this illegitimate so-called market that they claim the uh, corporate media touts as being the economy when it nothing could be further from the truth. And I want to ask you real quick, a follow-up on this, Gerald. The corporate, I argued for at least three years that the corporate stock buyback program that QE has allowed, that program seems to be running out because there's only so much of, of a corporation that can eat itself. And once it's eaten all of itself, then there's nothing else left. And instead of doing any uh, research and development or hiring or new talent or new products or reinvestment of any type, they've just simply done or been doing corporate stock buybacks? Or am I just completely off base here? You're 100% on base. All you have to go back is to 2005, 2006, when George Bush Jr. gave the same kind of tax repatriation deal that Trump gave on and tax breaks to the big corporations. 96% of the return money went into stock buybacks. With Trump's tax cuts, which the Tax Policy Center says enriched the 1%, 82% of it went to the 1%. According to the Goldman Sachs gang, this year we're going to see a trillion dollars plus in stock buybacks. Jeez. The money is not going into capital improvements. It's going to enrich the rich, the multinational plantation owners in slave landia. That is just so wrong. And that's what's wrong with our economy. That's the reason that we don't have an economy. But I want to move on because of there because we have a lot to cover. And uh, one of your other uh, points in your upcoming uh Trends, trends forecast uh, that you can find over at uh, trendsresearch.com is f focused on the what I call poisonous food. And I've been doing quite a bit of research over the past few months, and I've written several articles about what Russia's been doing. And, you know, the whole Russia did it narrative is every time you turn on the on TV or the radio, that's all you hear. And you can just pick a topic and there, you know, Russia's the problem. But uh, what we are, what I've been discussing and I've written about extensively, but few people are, are reporting on is the organic non-GMO food production 
that Russia is embarking. Russia has invited all of the uh, oppressed South African farmers to Russia and offered them land, seeds, housing, whatever they need. What impact do the trends say will this have on the global economy and more importantly on the health of the nations that turn to Russia for clean food products? Because I know this is a big deal to you, uh, Mr. Salente. You know, the clean food products instead of this poisonous food that the Western world produces. What do you, what did the uh, trends say about that? Well, yes. It, and just a little background. The first book I worked on was in mid 1980s called Natural Healing. It was a Warner book. And I have a honorary doctorate of law from the National University of Health Sciences. And you mentioned the term clean food. I coined that in 1993, New York Times did a major story on it. While the movement is very progressive in what you're telling me, and I didn't know about this, so thank you for informing me about what's going on in Russia, trends are born, they grow, they mature, reach old age and die. Although this is a positive trend, we have to look at the other counterforces that will negate a major part of it. So for example, one of our top trends for 2019 is the exploding society. And when we say about exploding is we mean about the obesity crisis that the United States is facing. And you hear in the media how people are going toward more healthy foods. It sounds good. When you look at the numbers, they don't add up that much. So for example, you take a look at the fast food industry. You go back to 1970. It was a $6 billion industry. Today, over $200 billion. Wow. You talk about organic. Anybody. Go into your major chain store, your, your supermarket. Look how tiny the organic section is compared to the long lines of GMO processed chemically laden garbage in aisle after aisle. So the organic movement, yes, it has grown substantially over the last two decades. And again, the media keeps blasting how America's food tastes have changed. But organic in 2017 accounted for only 5.5% of the food sold in retail channels. Wow, that, that's a tiny fragment. Yes. So that doesn't mean it's not going to continue to grow, but the reality is that once you become addicted, try breaking the habit. So, for example, children now six, seven, eight weeks old, are shipped off to daycare centers. Who's watching their diet? What are they eating? What are they getting used to? Look at the reality of what society has become. And again, look at the numbers. And addictions are real. You start smoking cigarettes, you get addicted to them. You do opiates, you get addicted to them. You start eating junk foods, you get addicted to them. You can't break the habit. And that's what's going on. So Americans are gobbling down burgers, fries, and other junk food, fast foods. And the obesity issue is becoming a national issue, a global issue. And it's not only in the household, it's in the military. I mean, you're looking at nearly 30% of the military members are overweight. So they're addicted. It's an addiction. And it's hard to break the addiction. And when you have a society that said, says fat is fine, and they attack people that say, no, it isn't, because there are direct health costs to it, they'll argue with you. And they'll call you what, you know, sexist, whatever, the, whatever stupid label they want to come up with. 
So again, it's, it's, the, it's the mentality that has caused a great addiction and the multinationals control the government. This isn't a democracy. Grow up, everybody. Did you ever hear of these things called campaign contributions? <laughs> Adults call them bribes and payoffs. Exactly. So they're not going to change anything to change our health. So what Russia is doing is ahead of the trend, but unfortunately the addiction that people have to low quality, highly processed, non-organic foods and chemically laden far outweighs the organic and clean food trend. But I think that it's, that it's a very positive step in the right direction. So yes, it's positive. And as I mentioned, trends are born, they grow, they mature, reach old age, and die. So this is a growing trend. It's a positive trend. And what it takes is a mental consciousness to change the direction. The, just to put this into perspective and how quick things could change. In America, over 180 million Americans or over 60% of the nation's population ages two and over are either obese or overweight. Wow. And among the 70% of adults who are overweight, 40% of them are obese. Did you ever hear that, that expression, pigs can't fly? You been to the airport lately? I've been to the grocery store and I see... You got it. <laughs> so now, I'm... in putting this into perspective, go back to the 1960s. Do you know how many people were obese among the 70% of adults? It's 40% today. Back then, 3.4%. Wow. Yeah. Wow. Wow is right. So we can change it if the mindset changes. And most important is you have to be consistent. For Americans to change and the nation to change, and again, the motto of the Trends Journal is think for yourself, so not proselytizing, is that you have to be healthy physically, emotionally, and spiritually. And believe me, I got my ups and downs. You know, I'm not, you know, I'm the last guy to say I do, I do it perfectly, but you have to keep working on it. And health, fitness, and nutrition, to me, are the major on trendpreneur opportunities that anybody that wants to create their own future should consider getting into. Yeah, the on trendpreneurs, that's a, that's a great uh, phrase that you've coined. As people become more health conscious, I think that it's going to be even bigger than that. That five point five percent of foods that are sold today in the in in the grocery stores is going to probably double or even triple over the next ten years. Maybe not even that long. And Again, the, let's go back to the baby boomers. They're babies no more. You know, right. I'm the leading edge. I'm, you know, we're 72, 73 years old. I was born in 46. And you look at the obesity as a risk factor is by far the greatest contributor to the burden of chronic disease in the United States. It accounts for over 47% of the total costs of chronic disease nationwide. Wow. That says a lot. So now let's put it into the personal perspective. I don't have any kids. I'm on my own. I don't want to end up as an inmate in a nursing home. And for those boomers that also start thinking like this, that's what could change the trend of the future. That people realize that the future is in your hands. Don't drop it. Really wanted to ask you about... you. You know, we're talking about the generations and Generation Z, and you have them listed as Generation Zero. And why? Why? What do you see 
other than the econ is it is that strictly based on economics because i know that you have a philosophy of uh body mind and spirit as being a, the whole package and, and when you say generation z is generation zero can you elaborate on that a little bit yeah it, it is the mind body and spirit they're addicted i was talking about addiction to food I, I and i was going to mention and it, and it just passed through my mind, look how people are addicted to their handhelds. Yes. And by the way, you know why they call them handhelds? No. Because they're masturbating in public. <laughs> okay. And they're addicted. These young people are addicted. Their whole lives, they've grown up unlike the baby boomers and millennial generation. This is their life. Their life is a handheld. Their life is digital. Their life is the internet world. We grew into it. And even people our age, of course, they're addicted to their, 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 their iPhones and et cetera and can't get off them. So now you start looking at the data that keeps coming out and showing the mental and physical effects that are having on Generation Z. And they're astounding. And this is a group, by the way, that was born between eh, the mid-1990s to around 2010. So it's the only world they've ever known and they're losing their social contacts and social graces. They are so connected to this that they cannot break away from it. It's a whole new future. And the reports are coming out, for example, they're having less sex. And there are also reports in showing how it's affecting their brains, you know, physically. Yes. Not, not making this stuff up. So Generation Z is going to be the zombie age. And that's what we see developing. Not an ounce of boogie, not a drop of jive. Well, that doesn't sound like a very, very bright future. And the one thing that, that I hold on hope with the Generation Z is the fact that they are actually gravitating back towards church. More, much more so than the millennial generation. And it's uh, reported that about 40% attend church once a week. And from my perspective, with the rise in uh, populism that we started the conversation out with, now we, I'm looking at that and, and seeing a glimmer of hope with the uh, Generation Z. Because if you've got 40% of these people that are nurturing their spiritual side, then there's a chance that we can break through and get to the other aspects of their life. Uh, yes and no, in the sense that once you're addicted to a technology, this, this, is, this is unprecedented in, 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 it really is. In, in the history of the world. You go out to any restaurant. You see a mother and father, they're both on their handhelds and an infant attached to their little thing. There's no communication anymore. You know, when I was a kid, they used to chase me out of the room. You know, I was listening all the time. They used to say, little pictures have big ears, you know. <laughs> <laughs> and, and, and they'd start talking in Italian, so I wouldn't understand what they were saying. Because you, you learn from the adults. And now the interplay is gone. Again, go to any restaurant. It's not only the adults that are on their handhelds and the kids, the infants are on theirs. It's couples. They're not talking to each other. And they're on. Look, I, I watch people walk up and down the street. I'm in Colonial Kingston, New York. Beautiful historic buildings. They don't see a thing around them. They're looking at their hand. So, yes, what you're saying to some extent, but on the broader scope, one of our top trends, and you mentioned about church, you must have heard the King's James Bible, yep. the meek shall inherit the earth. 
Nope. The geeks have inherited the earth. King James got the M and the G mixed up. The geeks have inherited the earth. And unless people come back to their true spirituality of body, mind, and spirit, the future is robotic as they, we can see it becoming right now. It's, it's, pretty, it's pretty bad out there. And I, I see exactly what you see, uh, Gerald, as far as the people walking around, looking at their hand. You go into a restaurant and you see exactly what you just described. You know, couples that aren't speaking, children that aren't. No one's interacting with each other. They're interacting with some electronic device. And I agree that it is a long road to hoe uh, that we have in front of us. But I, 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 I don't know. I, I just, I have to hold out hope. <laughs> maybe well, I'm that, being that, a little naive, you, but. <laughs> if you're going to hold out hope, then maybe you'll vote for a guy who comes out with a line of hope and change you can believe in. <laughs> <laughs> Well, you got me there. So. <laughs> hope, hope, hope is one of the most negative words in the metaphysical dictionary. It means wanting something to happen without doing anything to make it happen. I hope for this. I hope for that. What ha- I believe in that could change things to the positive. And again, I'm not preaching anything. The motto of the Trends Journal is think for yourself. Is that art is the way of finding the true meaning of the human spirit in so many ways. And as an Italian, I like to look at the Renaissance. Think about it. Before the Renaissance, there was the Black Plague decimating over 60% of Europe. The people got it in their heads that, hey, maybe we're doing something wrong. And what did they do? A Renaissance, a rebirth. At the height of the Renaissance in Florence, they used to say, Ale Romana e Antica, in the manner of the Romans and the ancients to describe the quality of their work. And that quality of the work in the Renaissance can still be seen. So for me, as I see it, we need a Renaissance of body, body mind, and spirit. And art is one of the ways to bring that back. I couldn't agree more. I am so glad that we took this extra few minutes because you have just made my entire year, Gerald. I am not joking. I mean that sincerely because art is the foundation of everything. I've, I've always said, or I've said for at least the past 20 years, there's only three conversations that matter. And that's God, art, and life. If you're not talking about one of those three subjects, you're talking about the weather. And then the weather (laughs) doesn't matter because it's happening outside of your window or it's happening all over you and there's nothing you can do about it. So if you're having a conversation, it should be centered on God, art, and life. And that's it. So thank you. Well, you know, I, uh, as you well know, I write about all the geopolitics and other things going on in the world, wars that, you know, don't make me very pleased. So what I do is if you came to my office, I have in my office, I have over 200 plants. Okay. And I water all of them. I take care of all of them. And it's filled, the walls are filled with art. And to me, again, Art is not only the way, true, way of finding the true meaning of the human spirit. Beauty is an antidote to fear. So I surround myself with beauty. Each night, I, most nights, I cook for myself and try to, uh, being Italian, of course, most of it's <laughs> Italian food. And so that's the way I try to counter the negatives by accent- accentuating the natural positives. I love it. I absolutely love what you just said. Seriously, I mean, this is wow. I I, I hope that we can that we can 
open up a dialogue and, and have you back on a lot more. And I hope that we can have this type of discussion more so in the future because this is the hope that I was talking about as far as seeing the future, not just sitting here, not doing anything about it, but living, living it and making it happen through art, through Italian cooking, through interacting with people realistically. These are the things that create life. These are the things that create, that fill our spirit, that create our spirit, that make us who we are. And instead of, instead of having some, you know, inanimate, negative, uh, electronic device attached to our hand, we can actually have a conversation and share beauty and share love with one another. I just thank you so much. You just you have no idea how much you, what what you've done for me right now. In all honesty, you have no idea. Ah, uh, thank you. So, but I'm not going to take up any more of your time, Mr. Salente, and I certainly appreciate all that you've given us. And you can find out all about the Trends Journal over at trendsresearch.com. Uh, and Mr. Salente, tell them about your service and what you have going on. Yeah, well, the Trends Journal is a monthly. We put out Trend Alerts weekly. We just came out with the top trends 2019. Money back guarantee. It's only $129 a year. And uh, it's the only place in the world where you will be able to read history before it happens. There's no magazine like it. You know, they have Time Magazine. That's great. Yeah. Let's look at last week's news tomorrow. Uh, the Trends Journal is tomorrow's news today. And, and again, money back guarantee. Uh, we put our heart, soul, and mind into putting out the best publication possible. And we've been at it now. I've been in the business now since. 1980. So uh, our track record is unmatched and we live by our word. I can attest to that. It is, it's, the Trends Journal is awesome. And the, the Trends Alert that you just sent out was, was really spot on and, and helped to create this conversation. So I really appreciate that. And uh, Mr. Salente, I, like I said, I want to take up any more of your time and I certainly appreciate all you've given us. Okay, thank you very much and Bon Natale.